Hi guys and welcome to my retro watches. In this episode I'm going to take this Casio LCD. Uh, it's a vintage watch. It's uh, I think from the 70s and for those of you who know me in the Facebook group know that I'm having a bit of an addiction to early LCD watches amongst all my other um, cravings for other sorts of watches. Um, now Standard procedure with me is I like to buy watches that don't work and I like to fix them. And despite not knowing a lot about electronics, and I'm still learning on the go, I've already got a few uh, little techniques that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, now, I've got no idea what lies in store for us in, in this watch. I've not even taken the back off yet. So, who knows? Uh, we're going to see. Generally what happens is uh, it's from the 70s, so it's 40-something years old. It's probably had a battery in it since 1980. Uh, and the battery is normally leaked and either ruined the module inside or enough to stop it from working, but you can repair it. So we're going to have a little uh, play with it and see what, uh, see what can happen. See if we can fix it. So there's a few tools and things that I use, pretty basic stuff, uh, and I'll just go through them very quickly. Uh, so obviously we've got some tweezers, which we might need to pull the module out or to hold some screws. Some screwdrivers also at the back here. Uh, something to put screws in. I use these little screw down plastic tubs, really handy. A fiberglass brush. Now. These are really, really cheap. You can buy them on eBay, a couple of UK pounds, a few dollars, and you can twist them, and it's made out of fiberglass. This one is unused hardly, uh, so it's quite hard, whereas this one I've used a lot, and it's nice and soft. So I kind of use them now in, in combination. Very good for cleaning the boards. It's a light abrasive. Uh, to use with that, I use alcohol. Now, this is not the alcohol that you drink, it's IPA, so I've got IPA, 99.9% .9 alcohol here. Again, very cheap to buy. I just keep it in a little jam jar uh, for easy access. Uh, I've got a spring bar tool, come pokey thing, you might need that. Case back opener, and then if we do need it, and probably for some shots in a bit for you guys, Microscope. Excuse the juddering camera. So, without further ado, we'll get into taking the case back off. We'll do some close up shots and see what lies beneath. Okay, now we're a little bit closer to it. See, it's got a nice blue dial, and the strap, as much as it looks nice, is non original. It's actually slightly bigger on the lugs and it's missing its clasp on the other end, deeming it completely useless to me. I'll turn it over and we'll get the reference from it. So it's a 51QR19. So, as I say, I've not done a video quite as unplanned as this before, so have to bear with me. Case back was easy enough. Sometimes that's worrying because that means somebody had been in there. Okay, so what can we see? What I can see is a very dirty battery. Yeah, battery is completely shot. No good to anybody that. So, the question now will be, what is the damage? I've seen worse. So you can't really see in any great detail there. 
Uh, so I'm going to put it on the microscope and just zoom in on there and let's see what we can uh, find uh, corrosion wise with the microscope. Okay, we're now on the uh, microscope and we're looking at the battery terminal and the green stuff there is corrosion caused by battery. Let's get that into focus. There we go, so it's probably not a good contact there. The top of the board so far looks okay. Oh, there we go. More corrosion, oxidization. Following the lines, you can see it's everywhere. Hopefully there hasn't eaten the tracks. We'll see. So yes, so far uh, it looks pretty ropey on the top. So we'll clean all that off and I'll show you how I'll do that. But first, what we should do before we do anything really is to put a battery in and see if we get any life out of it whatsoever. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so here is the old battery. And normally I'd look at that uh, with a magnifying glass or through some uh, through a loop and get the code off the back to replace. However, sometimes you can't read it or you don't know it. So I have this, which is a hard plastic battery sizer. And as you can see, really useful bit of kit. Um, all you have to do is take your battery and see which one it fits through. That's too, too big there, obviously too big there. There we go, here's that one. Just double check 329. No. It says 392, 384, or all the other ones in the brackets there. Quite a useful bit of kit. It's from this company in the UK, Cousins UK, and only cost a few pounds. Now, I'd already done that earlier, so there is the battery in preparation. So we're just going to plot that one in. One in. There is no uh, battery retaining clip on this one, so it's obviously done by the case back, to which we will try and screw back together. There we go, that's only enough. And turn it over. Oh, we do have some life. So that's very encouraging. Although I can see one problem, that we have a very faint segment there on the zero. However, it is working. A day indicator, AM, PM indicator. So that's good news. Um, sometimes when I've got to this point, there is still nothing on the screen um, so that's quite heartening however we'll start doing the cleaning process nevertheless so it is a simple case of getting your fiber pen dipping it in the alcohol which will quickly evaporate and clean now, <coughs> normally I'll be doing this under magnification again so I can see what I'm doing clearly um, so for the sake of the video we'll just do this with my naked eye obviously the one particularly difficult thing was in here Now what I also have is a quite a useful tool, um, if I just find it, it's 
as you can tell this video is definitely unplanned and off off the cuff what I've got here believe it or not is an old dentist tool uh, it's obviously been scraping some people's teeth over the years um, however it becomes a, a watchmaker's friend because for the the hard gunk let's see if I can zoom in there this should do a much better job of picking it up scratching it off Do some more with the fiber pen. I'm now using the soft one. trying to do now is take the module out of the case and examine it further on the other side okay so the modules removed I had to do it off camera because it was quite difficult there was this small metal retaining ring that sat in the back of the case that holds the module in and it was pretty much stuck solid so I've carefully prized it out and the modules pulled out so all I need to do now is strip that down and we'll try and clean both sides of the board and we need to clean the contacts for the pushers. So it looks like this here, the dial, should just lift off. There we are. And that exposes the screen. The screen is held on by four screws. And what the screen has is little, they're called zebra strips. There's some conductive rubber. And they touch the, um, the LCD and touch the board. And that creates the circuit, which lights the the digits up and that's probably where the issue is with the bad segment uh, we also need to try and get to the underside of the board and to do that it looks like we've got four screws let's try and zoom in a bit screws. These LCDs are so much different to the mechanical type watches that I'm used to and I think that's what creates more of a challenge. Excuse my fingers there. And this is the, uh, the quartz or the oscillator and like all quartz watches whether it's LCD or analog those things are what keep the whole thing in time and if they fail the watch will either not run or it might run really badly out of time. So, 
screws in my little pot so I don't lose them. And then we'll see how or if the board, try and do this on camera, zoom back out again. If the board can be removed at this stage. So I'm just gently prying, trying to find somewhere to do that. And there we are, the underside of the board. So the battery contacts come out, which means I can give that a better clean. And let's have a look. So, can't be certain. Uh, but the corrosion that we can see, let's get that out of the way. The corrosion you can see where I was pointing is on where the zebra strips connect. And my guess is that that might be where the issue is. Uh, once again, I'll put this on the scope and we'll have a look on the uh, microscope a bit closer. So, quite clearly, we have some issues here. We can see that there is quite a lot of corrosion and what looks like if we try and find my tool here looks like it's corroded the gold and also there however what we'll do first of all is I'll clean it and rebuild it and see what it looks like rather than go to town and trying to fix that uh, just looking at all the other parts while I'm talking so these are by the looks of how it works these two squares here are the contacts for the pushers Here, this small one, or these small two, I think. Is it the one? Okay. Uh, are for the light. As you can see there, there's the the bulb. Let's try and focus in on. Um, I guess while we've got the microscope out, we can examine how we cleaned earlier. And as you can see, or as I can see, we still need to do a little bit more. However, it was pretty bad in this corner here, and that looks quite nice. So there are still little bits, um, but whether they will actually interfere at this stage, what I tend to do is a bit of trial and error. So clean a bit, rebuild. There's no point in spending loads and loads of you know, time trying to get everything spotless when it would have worked before you did that. Um, I'm just looking at this because it might be that the track is burnt there, but we'll have to see. So we'll clean that now using the same method as we did before. And I'll put it back on the microscope and we'll have a look. Okay, so I've just cleaned all those contacts with the alcohol and the fiber brush again. And as you can see, they look a lot better. Uh, the bit that I thought was may have wore off the, the gold is, was erroneous. That was actually just dirt. Um, the tracks look okay uh, to me, but I'm not an electronics expert at all, and certainly not 
uh, an LCD watch expert. My uh, forte, as you know, is uh, mechanical watches. So this is all new to me. I guess looking at that one there, that still could do with a bit of a clean. Um, and the end ones here. So you kind of get the picture of what I'm trying to do. Um, I won't bore you with keep cleaning and filming and cleaning and filming. Uh, we will. I will clean all that up, and then this is the. You can just see the zebra strips. I thought I'd show you those under a microscope. There's one either side on this particular module, and they make contact with the board. And you want to make sure they're nice and clean, also. And you can just see there, it's sort of greenish, which obviously is where the battery acid's got onto it as well. So we'll clean that up and then we'll clean all those contacts there that look pretty rough. And we'll rebuild it and see what, see what happens. Okay, so I'm finally happy with the cleaning that I've done. And I've reconnected the battery contact. And I've cleaned these contacts up for the pushers. And all we need to do now is put the board on. And we're just going to turn that the other way. And position it. screws back in Does seem strange from a mechanical watch to an LCD that all I have to do is four screws. Um, but hey, you know, that was technology. Okay, one more. Okay. Board is assembled. Now it's just a case of Positioning. Oh, obviously, I was. I'm using my fingers here. Uh, I would normally be wearing finger cots and not wanting to mark or leave my fingerprints on this. But I will come back and do it properly uh, at the end. Um, as the dial, as the battery doesn't stay in. Just trying to see if we could do it like that. And it's still got the bad segment. Oh dear. More investigation is needed. At this point, I need to pause the video. I was a bit disheartened that I hadn't actually managed to fix the bad segment. Uh, which meant I had to go back to the drawing board uh, all off camera. Um, but I backtracked and looked at the LCD screen. I could see the, where the contacts were for the bad, well, for the segments themselves and counted back. And sure enough, I could see where I'd made the mistake. 
So on these photos here, you can see quite bad corrosion on those two points there. And then once I cleaned it all off, to me it looked okay. Actually turned out it wasn't. So what do we do to fix bad segments? You can see here the watch is now working perfectly fine. Now fortunately I subscribe to a channel called Vintage Digital Watches. And if you like digital watches, I suggest you also subscribe to that channel because the information that the the guy there gives out is just phenomenal. He uh, he can fix things that can't be fixed, uh, but he teaches you things as well. And he certainly taught me uh, what to do now. And what it is is you've got to try and join the contacts back back up on a board by using um, basically. This comes in different forms. And this is conductive paint, conductive silver paint. Um, he uses on his channel a very liquid type um, substance. I'd already pre-bought this, uh, and this is a lot thicker. And I use that along with a very fine paintbrush and my microscope, of course. Uh, you hardly use any of this at all and I've just painted it on let it dry overnight and then the following day scratch off the bits that you don't need uh, with a cocktail stick or a, a pin or something so that the contacts don't join and that should create the circuit so what I'll do now is show you the repair under the microscope okay so here we are under the uh, microscope and you can see the work I've done to fix these tracks uh, it's a bit crude still uh, but bear in mind we are under a lot of uh, uh, magnification here so you're working you know in a very small area and all I've done is use this this is the paintbrush so you can see the end of it under magnification still quite big uh, but we've gently brushed on the paint. What I did do first of all though is where you can see the green coating on the ends sort of here and there I scratched that off to reveal the gold uh, so that when you paint on the, the silver paint it touches both the gold on here on the pad and the gold on there which obviously creates a circuit. On this case, it was a, it was a circle, so I had to do it on both sides, and on this one, obviously just there, and all, you know. And then when you paint it on, it creates a circuit. Let it dry overnight, and I was going to put a separate coat on, uh, but it didn't need to. This paint is quite thick, uh, so it seemed that one coat uh, worked. I tried it out, expecting to put another coat on, rebuilt the module, and it was working fine. So there's no point in doing another coat. Um, so that's what it looks like, that's how you do it. Um, like I say, I'm, it, my artwork isn't fantastic, but the end result works. Uh, so hopefully this might actually help one of you guys if you want to have a go. Um, so now we'll just go back to the, to, the, to the finished watch. Okay, here's the finished watch, um, all rebuilt and working correctly, the segments are fine. Uh, it has a little micro light you can just see there which works if I press this one for the uh, date what I like about this is it starts at the year 1970 how cool is that <laughs> so we'll just set the time and away we go with that the original bracelet of course was missing the clasp link so uh, the only thing I found in my odd bins is this which is an expandy bracelet However, when it's offered up to the lugs, it's almost a perfect uh, fit. So we'll put it on that, take some shots with the still camera, and post them up at the end of the video. So, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I uh, hope you found this in interesting. I hope you may have learned something, or I've helped somebody out there in, the, in cyberspace. Uh, thanks for watching.